on this board, we're talking about budgeting. Now, what is budgeting? Budgeting is basically telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Or in other words, budgeting is like assigning your employees to specific jobs based on your financial priorities, right? Every dollar, every dollar, think of it this way. Think of it. Every dollar is like an employee. And so you have a team of employees and you get to decide how you're going to allocate those employees, right? How you're going to assign those employees to specific jobs based on your financial priorities, right? And the same thing for, for your time, right? Every hour is like an employee, right? And, and this is so important. Budgeting is so very important because but awareness builds control, right? Budgeting forces you to become aware of how you're spending your money, right? And that awareness builds control. By tracking every dollar and also by tracking every hour, right? By tracking every dollar and, and every hour, you will automatically become thoughtful regarding how you manage your money and your time. Budgeting is so very important. Now, we talk about priorities. You have to have clearly defined what your financial priorities are, right? And it's different for different people because different people are in different um, financial situations. But I want to give you like an overview of some of some financial pr priorities that I would like for you to consider, right? I call this framework of financial priorities. Number one is tide. I really believe that it's so very important to prioritize tithing. Basically, giving a portion of your money to your church or to um, a good cause or to someone in need, right? You know, giving, giving, because when you give with, with a sincere heart of gratitude, you confirm to yourself that you have more than enough. And that sense of abundance actually enables you to live a truly healthy life and actually enables you to have more, more gratitude and more, more, more power, you know, as you live your life. And that will actually ultimately enable you to earn more money, right? Because you have more confidence, you have more energy, right? So it's amazing, amazing. So I highly, highly encourage you to really prioritize tithing, right? You know, giving away a portion of, of your money towards your church or towards a good cause, right? Another good cause, right? Number two, um, prioritize building up a $1,000 mini emergency fund. If you don't already have $1,000 saved, you want to focus on getting a mini emergency fund because a fully... A fully funded emergency fund is, is like six months of your living expenses. And so if you don't, if you don't, but you want to start with baby steps, right? You know, you want to, you want to start with baby steps. And so if you don't have a thousand dollars saved, right. And, and a lot of people don't have a thousand dollars saved. A lot of people don't have anything saved, right? A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. And so, you know, the first baby step, right. Towards building a, a fully funded emergency fund is to focus on, the target of getting at least $1,000 saved, right? So you want to prioritize. If you don't, if you don't already have this, you want to prioritize getting $1,000 of a mini emergency fund, right? $1,000 saved. Number three, pay off all high interest debts, high interest debt. When I say high interest debt, I mean debt where the interest rate is above 8%, right? Because that's, that's high. That's high right? Um, so you want to prioritize getting rid of all debt that is high interest, right? I mean, eventually you want to become totally debt free. But like I said, you got to start with baby steps, right? And so focus, prioritize on, on paying off all high interest debt first, right? And then you can move forward in attacking the, the other debt. Um, number four, employer sponsored retirement fund, right? Um, but now here's the thing. So if you work a nine to five job and if your job offers you um, 
a a like 401k, you know, TSP or whatever, you know, if, if your job offers you any type of like employer funded retirement where they will match you up to a certain percentage, well, take advantage of that because that's free money that they're giving you, right, for your retirement. So take advantage of that, but only only take advantage of it uh, only up to the match. Don't invest any more more than what they're willing to match you, right? Because you know, it's really not you know, the only real benefit of it, right? Is that they're th that is that they're giving you free money, right? So only 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 invest in it up to the match that they're giving you, right? Sometimes it might be uh, up to three percent. Sometimes it might be up to five percent. Or some companies don't match at all, right? If they don't match at all, don't participate in it, you know, because there's better ways to invest your money, right? But if 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 it does. Um, if your employer has a sponsored retirement fund and, and they, they match you, invest in it only up to match. Number five, expand your emergency fund to be six months of your living expenses, right? Expand. You need six months, at least six months of your living expenses in cash, saved, right? And the best place to put it is into a high yield savings account, right? Because a high yield savings account will pay you interest, right? Like for example, Capital One right now is paying like 2%, you know, a little bit more than 2%, a little bit more than 2% on their high yield uh, saving accounts, right? So um, take advantage of that. Um, number six, save for special purchases, right? Save up. Like if you know that, you know, you're going to be needing to buy a car, you know, um, then, then say, start early to save up a little bit each month towards that future car purchase, right? If you know that you're gonna um, want to eventually buy a home, you know, then start saving up a portion of your income every month, you know, towards saving up for that down payment, right? Um, number seven, auto invest into a Roth IRA stock index fund. Ooh, this is huge, this is huge. You want to start early to invest, right? And so, um, look into Roth IRAs, right? And, and especially the ones that are, um, you know, for uh, index funds, index funds, right? Like index funds that, that track the S&P 500, right? Because they are very diversified. Basically, they are mutual funds that are very diversified. They're low costs, right? There's not a lot of fees in, associated with them. Um, and and it's, just, it's really great. It's really great. Um, and the interest is, is, is very, is very high, right? It goes up and down, right? But over the long term, it always goes up, right? Always goes up. So look into that. Um, number eight, auto invest into a non-retirement stock index fund, right? So you want to have both, you know, a Roth IRA, but also you want to have some investments that are non-retirement, right? The, 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 the retirement funds are for your retirement, right? You, you don't, you don't want to have to touch them until you're, until you're retired, you know? And then non-retirement stock index funds would be like non-retirement investments that um, still like long-term, like, you know, money that, that, that you don't plan to withdraw within, you know, at least five years, right? So, so, so the time horizon is, is, is at least five years, but it's non-retirement, right? You know, so meaning that you can take the money out with no penalties, right? So, um, so that's cool. A little side note, though, even with the Roth, the great thing about the Roth IRA, too, though, is that even though it's a retirement fund, you can take out your contributions with no penalty, right? And there's some other cool benefits with the Roth IRA. So definitely look into Roth IRAs, right? All right, where are we? We're number nine now. Okay, now, multiple streams of income through entrepreneurship. This is very important, right? You know, if you only have one stream of income, you're you're too close to being, you know, with no income, right? You know what I'm saying? So you want to have multiple streams of income. So multi build multiple streams of income through entrepreneurship. You know, every hobby is a potential um, stream of income, right? Every hobby is a potential business. And so you want to think about what are the things that you're passionate about and think about ways in which you can... Um, you know, transfer uh, those hobbies into businesses, you know, turn your passions into profits, right? So multiple streams of income, of income through entrepreneurship. And then also number 10, multiple streams of passive income 
through business ownership, stock market investing, and real estate investing, right? Because, you know, passive income is so great because it's like you, you, these are income streams where you, you have to spend time up front, right? You put in the work up front, but once it's established, then there's no, there's no need for additional work other than just tracking and managing the stream, right? Passive income is so amazing because you do the work up front and then it will automatically continue to bring you income without any type of act, without any type of additional active work, right? So look into that. Now let's talk about the budget. Every month you want to do a budget. You have to do a written budget every month because like I said, awareness builds control. You want to do a budget, you want to do a budget. And so here's what you do, very easy. I call this the zero-based budget because you're going to, um, and I'll, I'll explain how, why it's called zero-based budget. So basically, on a piece of paper or, or, or on, a, on a spreadsheet, right? Either way, what you want to do, you want to have two columns, right? Really, three columns, okay? Um, um, and the, 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 um, the, the, uh, the co two columns on the right, you want to have an, an expected column and you want to have an actual column and you want to list out right your first column you want to list out your income streams right right you might have more than one income stream you know like you have more than one job or if you have only one job then that's just one income stream you, you want to list out all your income streams right and and you want to put what your expected income from each income stream you know is for each for um for for the month right you want to, you want to list that out <clears throat> and then you want to list out your outflow right all of your streams of outflow meaning all of your expenses all of your um you know things that you plan to invest in you know all, all of that all all the saving even you know the amount that you want to put into savings right you want to list it out so that's like the tie right the money that you want to give away right during that month housing your, your rent or your mortgage payment right utilities right um cable tv um internet right that expense cell phone expense groceries eating out public transportation gas car repairs and maintenance car insurance health insurance debt repayments right gifts shopping entertainment slash vacation personal care investing and saving, right? And, and there might be more categories, or you might want to, you know, have separate categories for, for, for some of these bigger categories, whatever. But anyway, what you want to do, the basic idea, though, is just to list out all your income streams and all of your outflow streams, right? And so when you do this, though, um, and you put these numbers in, right, your, 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 your total income minus your total outflows should equal zero because the goal is is you want to give every dollar a name right in other words you want to assign each employee right and every dollar is an employee you want to assign each employee a specific job and these are the specific jobs that you're assigning your employees right and so you want to assign them. So, so your expected streams of income minus your expected outflow streams should equal zero because everything should be assigned, right? And then, so this is what you do at the beginning of each month. Before the month begins, you do this, right? You write it out. And then during the month, you track it. You track every dollar, right? And so by the end of the month, You'll be so at the end of the month, you'll be able to put in the actual numbers so that you can you can compare your expected budget to your actual numbers, right? And that's how you do a zero based budget, a zero based budget. So thank you for watching, and uh, and you have if you have any comments or questions, please put them into the chat box below, and I'll see you next time on the next video.